good evening to all of you i dr david isho deputy director emp business school delighted to welcome all of you to this webinar on hr i especially thank mr bapi devati lead faculty from durban university of technology south africa to whole heartedly accept Expect, accepting our invitation to talk to you to all the aspiring managers on a very important topic skills required for future jobs in human resource thank you very much sir durban university of technology is one of the leading university in south africa and it's an admired university and it's one of the partner university of emp at business school our students can participate in semester exchange program and other other international activities organized by durban university of technology at south africa i especially welcome all the aspiring managers to this session and i believe this webinar will be very useful to each one of you in case you have any question please type in the zoom chat box and on behalf of you our faculty dr kanika will put up the question let me repeat that again in case any one of you have any question or any doubt that you would like to clear please type that question in the chat box and our our faculty dr kanika will put up the question after the session emp business school was conceptualized in 1995 by cognitive scientist pankaj saran sir who is our current president of emp group and was built by a group of nation builders a present patent chairman is patna bhushan sri n vital sir who is known as the father of it and telecom movement in india today what you see as a big business in the digital world it telecom internet in india all the salute goes to our chairman for the exceptional growth that has and provided jobs to thousands and thousands of young people like you EMP is a modern gurukul and 80% of faculty and mentors they stay in the campus along with the students so students have a unique opportunity and they get a 24 bar 7 support all the 365 days okay. most important which you need to all of you have to know and understand is EMP business school is the only business school in delhi which has a safe and secure pollution free campus with hostel inside the campus emp offers top line of ai infused pgdm programs in marketing finance hr international business advertising and business analysis and research which is the need of the hour by the industry in all sectors of management in all verticals all our courses are mnc co developed and co delivered which means the intensive practitioner will come and teach you so you'll be directly able to learn from the people working in the industry we provide our management students a globally recognized ai skill certification which is very important for the recruitment purpose and also for your career growth emp is only business school which has ai lab powered by ibm and bot lab powered by automation in the us and this lab is very important for the aspiring managers to get hands on training emp is only business school in delhi which has atal incubation center supported by niti ayog the planning commission of india this will provide the opportunity 
for all the aspiring managers to get practical exposure and also if you'd like to start a business this will be your launching pad where you can start your business we provide all our students with live projects field projects and most important we provide captain project mentored by industry professional so that you can practically learn how ai works in the real world in solving management related problems empi has more than 75 mous with universities in various country and our students has the opportunity to participate in international program including semester exchange program empi provides personal mentoring to each student personality development program and placement training program <coughs> good news <coughs> is at this this critical time of pandemic we had an excellent placement and many of our current batch students who are doing the summer internship they have got double internship from two different organization and they are doing working on two different organizations at the same time so this is a very big achievement that our students have got in the side of placement and as well as for summer internship now i would like to introduce our speaker of the day mr devati devati is a skill innovator he is a social justice justice supporter and a humanist academician his skill, key skill is mentoring young people he holds two masters degree in human resource and adult education currently is working on self directed learning and challenge management his research interest areas are higher education human resource development and social justice he is a conference press person paper reviewer and is supervising both masters and phd level students he is a member of various association he enjoys spending time with students family and friends now i would like to welcome dr devati directly from south africa from durban university to take the session and over to you sir now thank you very much uh, for that introduction i really appreciate it i hope you can hear me on your side and i want to pass these greetings from the seaside friendly multicultural city of Durban the third largest city after Johannesburg and Cape Town on the southern tip of Africa in South Africa and thank you to Dr Isao for the invitation to deliver this important presentation and the rest of the entrepreneurship and management process international business school organizing team in delhi india i also extend an appreciation to my university the durban university of technology for organizing this opportunity particularly dr lawrence who is the deputy dean of management sciences so i am truly honored to be here greetings to the management students and welcome to the presentation and conversation i understand that i will conduct a presentation for about 60 minutes thereafter there will be an opportunity for engagement so the presentation is titled the required skills for emerging human resource jobs of course the presentation takes place during the covid-19 pandemic which is changing our lives and the world of work amidst changes management students require emerging competencies to create innovative interventions 
that empower employees to continue to deliver superior performance and strengthen business competitiveness. Sir, your okay. assent is not clear, sir. Excuse me. Hello. Assent is not clear. Can, can I continue? Yes. yes. Therefore, the reflective opinion piece is conducted through a human resource practitioner lens and technological advances rather than theorizing and conceptualizing the topic. So I will conduct the presentation from a practitioner basis rather than uh, just theorizing uh, the, the, the topic. So I will start by problematizing the human resources field within a changing world of work. I will then develop an exposition on the need to renew human resource capital capability. Thereafter, I will propose emergent skills that human resource specialists require in the post-COVID-19 period. Over many decades, the human resources field has changed from an administrative function to a strategic business partner that drives change including technological changes. Businesses and universities that lack innovation compromise competitive edge by adopting outdated human resource systems, such as paper-based leave forms and structures that take long to respond to employee needs and experiences. For example, delayed recruitment and salary payments and delivering old curriculum. In addition, in-house training in businesses may be slow in implementing future skills required by industry for competitiveness. So the rapid pace of technological changes necessitates that higher education institutions innovate in order to produce human resource management students who are prepared for the changing world of work in the fourth industrial revolution. As all employees have to access human resource services, these services ought to be quick responsive, technology-based to drive innovation and bring down the cost uh, whilst improving the productivity um, of, the, of the organization. There are some who have argued that technology will replace employees. The International Monetary Fund predicts that 50% of the jobs that exist today will not exist by the time a child starting school joins university. My view is that mundane and repetitive jobs will be replaced by technology. For example, ushers at movie theater. So when you go into a movie theater, there's a person there to check your tickets and so on. Those kind of jobs will be replaced by technology, uh, uh, certainly. But most jobs that require critical thinking and specialist capabilities, such as managers, electricians, plumbers, engineers, economists, will remain relevant into the foreseeable future. Martin Fleming of IBM in the United States argues the same point, that most jobs will still be done by human beings well into the, into the future. Now, I will talk more about the context that I am in in South Africa. 
South Africa continues to experience poverty, inequality, and unemployment. There is high unemployment, estimated at around 30% by Statistics South Africa, of which the highest proportion is amongst young people. Despite young people entering higher education institutions in large numbers. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought these inequalities to bear where jobs have been lost as businesses shut down in South Africa. Post COVID-19, many businesses will survive and create jobs in different forms using different business models, other businesses will disappear and new businesses will emerge, creating opportunities for management students like yourselves to take advantage of. McKinsey, South Africa, projects that uh, digitization, for example, and machine learning will create more jobs due to increased productivity, which will ultimately strengthen uh, the economy. The challenge for the human resources field is the provision of emerging skills to support the interface between employees, the human beings, and technology in a changing world of work. So now I am going to cover the required skills for emerging human resources jobs that management students can take advantage of. It is important to note that the skills are based on capabilities required to tackle complex business challenges. Using the human resources field, supported by technological advances for quick and responsiveness to the changes that are taking place um, around us. So the first skill that will be important in human resources will be analytical skills. In a knowledge economy, Human resource specialists require analytical skills to source, process, interpret big data in a quick and responsive manner to remain competitive and relevant. Big data can be used to draw current and future human capital capabilities for an enterprise to achieve its strategic imperative. Human resources ought to build internal analytical skills and also support employees to develop cognition required to process and interpret big data. In particular, human resource specialists can anticipate potential disruptions for employee work, package data on employee behavior in a useful manner, and disseminate data to support decision-making throughout the enterprise. Enterprises can also identify and take advantage of employee opportunities arising from the intersection between employees, the human side, and technology, in this particular example, big data. So key to this is that intersection with big data in a quick and responsive manner to remain competitive and relevant. So, these are exciting times for the human resources field because it presents opportunities and fundamentally changing how HR should operate beyond 
just the administrative function. But it's also an uncertain time as HR practitioners wonder if they have the correct skills to respond to the technological advances taking place. Big data also necessitates access to devices, data, and connectivity, which is not equitably accessed in South Africa, where I am located. South Africa, as a developing nation, faces a digital divide between those with access and those without or limited access. The inequitable access means that big businesses like the financial services sector can thrive with big data, while smaller and medium-sized enterprises may not prioritize big data analytics. According to Zeke Sokdikwa of Oracle South Africa, a computer company, technology company, Data analytics adoption is still in its infancy in South Africa. So there are many opportunities there on how to uh, fast track the penetration of these technological platforms or opportunities like big data into enterprises and human resources that management students can uh, take advantage of. However, the challenges also point to the opportunities that human resource specialists can pursue to ensure equitable access to big data analytics for employee experiences at different levels of the organization, particularly uh, in the developing world. During COVID-19, Employees have to work from home. This session, for instance, is being, uh, it, that takes place from my home. And traditional enterprises are realizing the need for technological capabilities and platforms such as Zoom, the software we are using, the platform we are using now, and Microsoft Teams to work remotely. There is a scramble for collecting information about the state of readiness for remote working employees. So an innovative enterprise, even without predicting a global pandemic through big data, could have used big data to systematically predict and prepare employees to work with advanced technologies remotely. Instead, the pandemic amplified the need for emerging analytical skills to process, interpret, and package big data to facilitate decision-making throughout the, the organization. As employees, have lost their jobs and companies closed down, employees with transferable analytical skills across industries, whether it's the financial sector, manufacturing, health, education, employees who are able to transfer these skills across such industries who can process big data can access employment opportunities in innovative, in innovative uh, organizations. Alternatively, start their own businesses, such as uh, business analytics consulting, and then provide support to those organizations that may be delaying their uh, acceptance or utilization of, of these technologies. Another example here in South Africa is in the meter taxi, the meter taxi industry, the e-hailing industry. Uber disrupted the industry 
forcing long-time existing taxes to adapt. Employees of the meter taxi industry were caught unaware about the skills required for developing and utilizing existing apps for e-hailing, electronic hailing. And this has extended to delivery businesses as well, Uber Eats and so on. And it is important to note that Uber has headquarters that are located in New York, in the US. And we saw cases here of uh, competitors using violent ways of competing with Uber instead of adapting to what Uber is offering and providing a better product on the market. So instead of using violence, to compete in business, human resource specialists should develop employee analytical skills to identify and respond to potential risks and opportunities quickly. Therefore, in a globalizing world, disruptions can emerge from anywhere at any time. And these examples can be amplified in various industries, education, health, manufacturing, regarding the importance of anticipating technological advances and preparing interventions thereof. Whilst it is not possible to predict every event and its impact on business, the focus I argue, should be on analytical skills for dealing with the changing world of work. Human resource specialists require an understanding of the cognitive process that goes into analyzing the data. The behavior carried from analyzing big data as well as actions to be taken arising from big data to ensure the uptake. You might recall earlier, I mentioned that the uptake from enterprises in South Africa of these technologies is, is quite low. Enterprises tend to bring in consultants from outside and there's less of a transfer of this knowledge onto employees in organizations. And I am arguing that HR should be part of that interface in terms of information sharing between the different functional areas. So in this regard, the chief information officer should work closer with human resources on common objectives about using uh, big data, deep learning, Pedagogies can be used to empower employees on analytical skills for, for big data. The importance of this is for human resource specialists to know how to go about capacitating employee analytical abilities for, for big data. Therefore, analytical abilities are not only about financial indicators and consumer behavior, but also about social and human relations, organizational behavior indicators in a changing world. So from a history of human resources being about administration, opportunities arise therefore in terms of job titles such as chief data analyst, human resource technology executive, and human capital data practitioner. The other skill that is important for the human resources field will be the digital skills um, required in the field. The idea of using paper-based solutions to human resources functions is old-fashioned and outdated. Digital skills for human resource 
specialist will be required to navigate the developing technology to meet the needs of an increasingly younger generation, like some of you attending this presentation, who are technology savvy, who require workplaces that understand these students. The ability and willingness to use platforms like cloud computing, social media platforms, and other new applications will be the skills of the future in human resource management. So digital skills will begin to close the divide and create opportunities for streamlining, digitizing, and saving time and costs of applying human resource functions whilst improving productivity and efficiency of, oper of operations. So really, HR needs to try and move away from traditional safe ways of providing services to employees and actually employ and embrace these technologies that are, are being provided. For the HR field to be able to do that, they need the digital skills and then to ensure that employees throughout the enterprise have these skills as well. In this way, human resource specialists can focus on strategic matters of strengthening the experiences of employees in the workplace. Localized technology solutions could be around the use of indigenous languages to teach, develop, and design digital platforms to extend accessibility, relatability, and user friendliness of technology interface, uh, uh, technology interface, so that technology is not perhaps intimidating to those who may not be technology savvy, and to ensure that uh, there's a push towards encouraging more people to embrace these technologies in the human resources field. So there is a need for more locally produced, locally designed digital platforms rather than relying on, for example, Silicon Valley and elsewhere for this development. So can Africa, can South Africa develop its own um, uh, platforms? In fact, digital skills ought to be a requirement for new human resource jobs beyond just computer skills. For example, in the logistic industry, typified by a company called Greenroad, is, uh, this company is digitizing its operations and they are moving away from manually tracking cargo using an outdated system. Instead, they are taking advantage of the Internet of Things, automation, and machine learning. The question is whether the employees and managers have been capacitated to deal with these changes at Green Road, to push the issue of the uptake. So will human resource specialists know how to capacitate these employees to work with these technologies? Therefore, the need to identify learning opportunities and take advantage of them has to become the initiative of the employees as well as, um, as, well as the employer. The benefits will be improved productivity, reduced costs and delays, and to strengthen accountability for performance. In the higher education sector, academics have to use online learning, which requires digital skills. This could be around inclusivity, technology applications, to try and humanize technology, to bring people closer, to bring technology closer to the people. It will be important for digital skills 
to be supplemented by human connections, the HR field, to build organizational cultures and, and values. So I must emphasize here that whilst technology is emphasizing the human factor remains. We must remember that behind the machines, behind the technology, there is a human being there. Self-directed learning will be important for employees to keep up to date with the skills required in the industries. We know now that, that there are MOOCs, massive uh, online courses available uh, that anyone can join for free in the main. So it will be up to the employees to take advantage of these opportunities uh, that are available out there. Therefore, the need to identify learning opportunities and take advantage of them, of them has to become the initiative of the employees. There are opportunities to get promoted. If not, employees can move on to other organizations in this space, the digital space. Also employees uh, or management students can start their own businesses using um, their digital skills. So digital skills create opportunities for employees to take care of their learning needs. So I was quite interested to hear more about your universities before this presentation and the work that is being done um, in this space. The other skill that is important is the agility skills. Human resource specialists will increasingly employ people for, for a short term or for a specific project or for specific projects with options to work elsewhere, almost like consultants. The idea of jobs for life or jobs until retirement is becoming extinct. Therefore, agility will be of value and currency uh, to be recognized by employers and human resources, especially amongst the younger generation. Human resources specialists ought to accommodate employee consultants who are multi or inter-skilled and technology savvy in terms of internal policies, systems and structures and procedures. Human resource specialists will need to develop methodologies, practices and tools to become Agile. So an employee consultant works for an organization for a short period, starts a consulting company, you know, they leave that com uh, the one company after a short period, they start a consulting company, work for a few years, close down the consultancy firm or employ somebody to take care of that consultancy firm, go on to work for another organization. So this employee works with different kinds, uh, different types of organizations in different industries for short periods and projects, and then goes back to the initial employer where they started, bringing along agile skills and expertise that can benefit the current employer at that time. So human resource specialists ought to recognize these employees who have short-term employment with various um, employers. Jobs may include working with diverse technology capabilities along the way, which enriches the multi-skills of the incumbent. So in the past, uh, employees whose CVs um, curriculum guitar or applications and contracts, uh, contracts of employment showed job hopping where an employee moves around a lot. They don't, they're not loyal to a business. We're often frowned upon when making decisions about who to employ. 
because a person who changes jobs a lot is seen to not show loyalty to the business, bringing up the cost of recruiting replacements. But in the future, employees will increasingly present CVs with lots of job hopping. So human resource practitioners have to provide tools for enabling agile employees to show superior performance, even for a short while, through building a quick and responsive organizational culture. At Accenture in the United States, the information technology executive is also responsible for human resource uh, function, particularly around data. So it is important to be adaptable to working across business fields. So although you might be a specialist uh, in engineering, for instance, can you work also in marketing, in HR, bringing your area of expertise into those functions and looking at all these functions in an interrelated way? The ability of employees to also adapt to robotics is another area. Algorithms can be used to decipher a person's online presence. For example, from LinkedIn, social media, YouTube videos, to extrapolate whether to employ a person or not. And also, artificial intelligence perhaps can be used to make these decisions. The information that is available about an applicant for a job can artificial in, in, uh, intelligence predict how this employee will behave in an organization to assist with decision making. So for the human resources department, the challenge will be around managing performance of employees who are agile against those employees who are resistant to agility. Agile employees may want to work in their own terms with clear performance expectations that are related to career planning, career pathing, and recognition. Agile employees require responsive organizations and leaders who are open to new technologies and fresh ideas wherever those ideas come from. Therefore, organizations that will survive are those who develop strategies and interventions to manage and retain agile employees. So the organizational structure as we know it, we have to, the HR field has to rethink the, the organizational structure to create more flatter structures and encourage ideas to emanate from any part of the organization, regardless of seniority, you know, what position a person holds in the organization. Jobs here could be performance experience specialists. The other skill that human resources will require will be problem problem solving skills. Running a business has become tougher with challenges, global challenges, regional, local, and these challenges require problem solving in order to take advantage of opportunities. So instead of spending time on articulating problems to no end, it will be important to find solutions that are feasible and practical in a changing world of work. One of the challenges faced by the human resources field, perhaps uh, the management students attending this presentation can explore further, is around managing the performance of employees who work with te technology. Often, a blanket approach is, of, is used to manage employee performance. Perhaps once again, 
artificial intelligence can be used to anticipate performance issues arising from, for example, downtime and risks associated with breakdown of machinery in the manufacturing sector and provide recommendations for improvement there. Artificial intelligence software can be used to manage performance appraisal of individuals and teams to extrapolate the employee profile and the machine tracking and at which point these two aspects intersect to predict future performance. That is why the HR field needs to be recapacitated so that they can hold these conversations in the fourth industrial revolution. Problems with technology uh, uptake are around access cybercrime, protection of information, especially with, within human resources, where personal information of employees is kept. Therefore, management students, I am challenging you to look into how these problems can be um, solved using technology. The convergence of technologies in processing card payments in the banks is another example. The number of components involved in those transactions, the human factor, still human beings who develop these technologies who must understand how they work, the timing of how these technologies are used in the banking sector, the maintenance required will necessitate a new set of problem solving skills for employees and for the HR field to manage the performance of those employees. But more broadly, to look into the well-being of employees when using technology. Problems with technology can also be looked at from the user perspective and the user perspective experiences of these technologies can generate ideas which can be used to start up new businesses, create employment through incubation and support for, uh, for those businesses. So it will be important to leverage data applications and accessible technologies to solve these problems. Judgment will be key in decision making and solving substantive problems quickly and efficiently. I do not agree with the notion that decisions will only be made by machines. I believe that the human factor will remain in supporting decision making in, uh, in organizations. So one of the problems, some of the problems are around access to devices, as I mentioned earlier, and data, which further illuminates the digital divide in an unequal society, South Africa. This is a problem that needs to be solved. In a country that is battling with inequality, problem solving should, take, should be taken into cognizance that diversity, inclusivity, and transformation of access to technology has to be considered. So I want to challenge students to be thinking and imagining further by suggesting the following. In the long term, management students should look into whether there are ways of providing bandwidth using space technology such as satellite capability to reach disadvantaged areas in far flung areas geographically, geographically rather than installing ground-based towers. In this regard, 
human resource specialist could investigate performance coaching that recognizes these big ideas that are more long-term or medium-term uh, uh, to look beyond just the short-term uh, in front of us. And the human resources field, alongside technology and other fields, economies have an important role to play in this space. The next skill that will be important in the human resources field is the issue of collaboration. Rapid technological advances necessitate that human resources collaborate with technology service stakeholders in ICT internally and externally. Even more important is that human resource specialists should possess collaboration skills using technology. That is why human resources specialists need to become more comfortable with utilizing these technologies. Most jobs and projects will continue to necessitate teamwork and participation. In the future, employees will work alongside, increasingly, alongside machine learning, robotics, artificial intelligence, uh, data intelligence, uh, uh, for instance. Where employees collaborate with, for example, a robot or machine learning, human resource specialists have to manage the interface between employees machine learning and robotics, for example. These changes require a rethink, a reimagination of job description and team contribution and capability in an organization. Again, these are exciting times for the human resources field because the opportunities are plenty. However, there are concerns about these technologies, machine learning and robotics, for example, on the issue that technology will take over people's jobs, leading to disagreements between employers and the labor movement and the human resources field as well you'll find that HR specialists may be reluctant to adopt technologies because they fear that these technologies will end up taking their jobs as HR specialists. And the labor movement, whose primary function is to protect jobs, may also be reluctant to adopt technology. So management students should look into how perhaps these technologies can be uh, introduced systematically and also to make sure that all the stakeholders are brought along on this journey of adopting these technologies. So perhaps to invite labor, the labor movement, to join strategic planning meetings around the changing world of work, to make them participate more meaningfully in that space and in that way encourage collaboration and sensitize labor that they just need to be reskilled on the skills that will be required um, in the future. One of the ways, uh, okay, I've already mentioned this point. What is, clearly, what is clear is that technology will advance a bit at different paces depending on country. In my country, South Africa, the adoption of these technologies is really still in its infancy when compared to first world countries, for example, Japan, where technology uh, adoption seems to be maturing. It is the duty of human resource specialists to explore functions that can be done by uh, machine learning, robotics, for example, convergence through Internet of Things and preparing employees for that changing 
world of work. The area of remote working deserves a mention here. When employees are expected to work remotely and collaborate, a new world of work is indeed emerging. Machine learning is particularly important in ensuring that when employees col collaborate remotely, the focus can be more on critical job functions. Human resource specialists should revisit policies and procedures to reflect, accommodate, and collaborate uh, remotely. One of the challenges with collaborative work is using is using technology in a humanized way. How do you bring in the humanity into the use of technology, right? So this has to be done throughout the different levels of the, of the organization. With competition for talent intensifying around the world, Talent can be found anywhere, and technology gives a sense of being equal on platforms for accessing opportunities. Artificial intelligence can be used to find and predict talent potential in responsive and adaptive organizations. So artificial intelligence can be used to support recruitment and selection of, of employees. Working together with line managers, human resource practitioners require an understanding of artificial intelligence for drawing promising talent, for driving technology adoption outside of rigid, outdated organizational structure hierarchy. In fact, ideas can emerge from young people, like uh, some of the people attending this presentation, startups and innov innovative enterprises. We know that, for example, Silicon Valley is full of young people with fresh ideas. We need a Silicon Valley uh, type enterprise in Africa as well. And I'm sure uh, there are uh, similar type uh, projects in India as well. In the health sector, collaboration has become more important between manufacturing and essential health workers. Imagine if artificial intelligence was used to predict the demand uh, for personal protective equipment at scale and reach to save lives of health workers and patients, which requires collaboration between these sectors. We might also see this with the chase for finding a vaccine for COVID-19. So this is an important question. Post COVID-19, human resource practitioners ought to reflect on whether machine learning and artificial intelligence capabilities were fully explored to combat the COVID-19 pandemic. The challenge for management students in South Africa and elsewhere, and for the human resources field, is to support essential workers by collaborating with available technologies in machine learning and artificial intelligence. There are ethical questions that have to be considered around this intersection between human beings and technology and the provision of psychosocial support for patients and employees in the changing world of work. Some job opportunities here will lie in employee engagement specialists. How can we keep our employees engaged with the workplace? so that they are satisfied, motivated, um, and inspired to share their ideas and take the organization forward, right? Chief talent officer is another job title in this space, and talent experience promoter. 
So management students have to develop analytical skills, problem solving skills, agility skills, digital skills, and collaborative capabilities to meet the needs of the future human resources world of work. Beyond this talk, it is important to prepare for the combining of technology and human beings in the future, what is being termed the emerging fifth industrial revolution. For example, the notion of inserting microchips on the human body to advance knowledge and understand business better. Of course, there are many questions around those developments. So human resources will need to keep abreast of technological advances. Management students ought to be at the forefront of enabling these changes in enterprises. Therefore, human resources, I believe, will be employed for some of the skills that I have mentioned today within the, the time that I have been allocated. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation. And I am happy to take in any comments at this stage. Hi, good evening, sir. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Kanika from EMPI. Hi. I thank you. I am unable to hear the question. I think there is a problem. Yes, yes, with, sir. There was uh, some technical glitch. Now, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, bringing out the various important elements about uh, the skills that you have shared. But uh, And though you have touched upon the relevance of AI, but uh, still some students are looking forward to understand how AI can build in more effectiveness in delivering uh, HR services. Can you repeat your question then? Sir, yes. Sir, the students are looking forward to know how uh, rel uh, AI can bring in more effectiveness in providing HR services? Well, there are many opportunities for artificial intelligence in the HR uh, field. In many respects, the HR field has to try to predict how employees will behave in the workplace. Right? And those decisions um, are not always taken lightly, or sometimes they will have limitation in terms of what human beings can do. So for example, in recruitment, the human resources field has to decide who actually gets the job. And because employees now come with some level of um, profile, in the technology space, whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's uh, YouTube videos that they might have recorded and so on, can AI draw from the profile of applicants for jobs that, is, that exists in the technology space to use that information to predict who should actually get the job uh, in the organization. So that is an example. Another example is around training, where you are trying to find where the gaps are in employee performance and the limitations of what employees can do and to find ways of developing artificial intelligence software relevant for the context uh, to support the gaps that employees have in terms of, of their uh, skills uh, gaps. So there are many areas in which artificial intelligence can be used. The challenge is 
the uptake that HR seems to be reluctant to adopt these technologies. So management students perhaps can find ways of how to sell these ideas to the HR field so that they can be more accepting of these ideas. So maybe, for example, to show how artificial intelligence then saves time, saves cost, and improves the productivity of, of the enterprise. So, so uh, there are a few other queries. So one of them is like, sir, uh, would it be appropriate if we say that uh, traditional technologies or techniques would completely lose their value in the advent of new technologies coming up? I think that traditional technologies, um, they are, there is a space for them in terms of showing us what is, what is possible. Traditional technologies can provide us with cases for what we still need to uh, improve on. But certainly, the uptake will be on new technologies that are improving, simplifying, streamlining how business functions are undertaken um, uh, in workplaces to ensure that um, enterprises remain competitive. So really it will be about showing what the benefits of those new tele technologies are. And more importantly, from the HR field to ensure that employees are not left behind when enterprises move from traditional technologies to emerging technologies, robotics, business intelligence, um, and so on. So HR has to manage that transition for managers and other functional areas so that this is not just the, the duty of IT, information technology practitioners to, to, to manage that. So management students really should assist uh, the world and their local context to find better new technologies that can support businesses to become more sustainable in the long term. And the COVID-19 pandemic has shown that where, um, where enterprises were trying to find these technologies that can support them in the work that um, they do. Thank you for that very important question. Yeah, thanks for clarifying the doubts regarding the technology. There is something besides technology as well. So, sir, what would you suggest on this? Like, what should be the minimum time that a fresher must spend in the first organization? Can you repeat that question? So I'm saying, I'm asking, what should be the minimum tenure that a fresher must be working for the organization, for the very first organization? Because in the uh, presentation you were talking about the people should not be very much hoppy from one organization to the other. So is there any standard uh, time frame, say a year or something like that? What would you like to uh, suggest upon this, sir? Yeah, thank you for that very important question. I would suggest that for a student who has just left university, yes. who joins an organization, to look into staying in that organization for at least three years minimum, right? Uh, because within that period of about three years, the new a student who joins an enterprise can really learn about how a business operates in the first instance, the context that they are working in, the industry that they are working in, where they can find where the gaps, the challenges are, where the problems are, and to begin to suggest solutions to those uh, problems and gaps in, in organizations and begin to also implement or be part of the implementation of those solutions in those uh, organizations. So that in the end of their tenure, they can show when they came into the organization where the organization was, and because of the ideas 
that they have brought into that organization, for example, in technology, how those ideas were implemented and what the results of those implemented ideas are in the end. So about three years should be a time frame where this should be able to happen, uh, perhaps three to, to about uh, five years, because I know young people tend to want to move around a lot. Also, it depends on the organization. So if it's an innovative organization, which is futuristic, there are many opportunities there for growth and development, and HR can assist uh, in that regard. And so I would say it should be about three to five years. But also, if I may add here, is that sometimes you find that young people will join an organization before they've actually made an impact on that organization they leave to go and work for another organization. So when they are being interviewed about the value that they brought into their previous employer, they are unable to articulate what they've actually done. So they need to stay long enough to make an impact uh, based on the idea that they have come up with and you know, implemented throughout the organization. Thank you so much, sir, for addressing all the uh, queries uh, very effectively and listening me patiently. I would like to invite uh, Dr. Premashish Roy, Assistant Dean EMPI, to uh, propose the word of thanks. Dr. Premashish Roy, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Dr. Kanika. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, it is indeed a privilege to have Professor Daveti, lead faculty, human resource management, Durban University of Technology, South Africa. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Your insightful lecture on skills required for future jobs in human resource was full of wisdom and information. Uh, you covered mostly everything. You have given a very broad glimpse of what the HR professionals are going through. Uh, you talked about, you, you very nicely set the situation, the current situation throughout the world what's happening in the corporate world. And each country is having its own problem. You talked about inequality in South Africa. You talked about diversity. Every country has its own problem and the corporates operating in the, organ, uh, in the particular country has to face, encounter all those challenges. You very nicely talked about that situation. And then gradually you moved into talking about the skills required for the HR for this uh, uh, generation this time. You talked about how the importance of big data. You talked about analytical skill, which is very important, required today. Uh, we all don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We are undergoing through a VUCA world, volatile, uncertainty, complex and ambiguous world. People say that there are a lot of black swan events. So you talked about the black swan events, talking about like unknown crisis. You touched upon how this disruptive technology, whether it's going to take away jobs or well, the HR need to be more tech savvy. You very nicely talked about our HR technology need to be user friendly. It, the technology should be localized. People should not be afraid with the technology, the HR experts, HR, Professionals should know about the technology. They should not run away. How they can uh, utilize it. Then you talked about how HR, cognitive process, behavior, what kind of actions to be taken, what kind of interventions to be brought in, how the chief uh, information officer should work hand in hand with the HR professionals. You talked about Internet of Things, you talked about machine learning, you gave examples of 
Some companies in South Africa primarily talked about green roads. You talked about like people uh, going for job hopping. Uh, people have become more agile. Uh, the HR experts need to think about how to uh, bring in that conducive organizational culture, responsive organizational culture, to have the right person in the organization. Uh, you talked about robotics, you talked about AI, how AI is going to help in managing the downtime, risk management, performance management. You give the participant uh, students to think on uh, how cybercrime, how privacy policy can be taken care of. And uh, concurrently, you also talked about policy, how the human resource policy should be thought, redefined, so that on the other side, we have something what we call labor movement, because if new technology eat away his job, what will happen? We need to understand that. So again, you talked very nicely about how teamwork collaboration is required with this kind of robots and, and the HR managers should have that interface. So all said and done, you have very nicely given, given a wonderful glimpse. What is the current situation? What kind of uh, HR skills the current aspiring managers need to imbibe, inculcate? so that they become ready to face the challenges now and post COVID-19. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Uh, even we, the faculty members, were enlightened by your talk. Once again, I thank you, sir, for having spared your precious time for all of us. We thank our president, Pankaj Saran, sir, Vice President, Dr. Abhira Sharan, to patronize this webinar. We thank all the faculty members and staff for extending their support. And of course, I thank all the participants and students who were rapidly engrossed in this brilliant session. Uh, there's an information to all the participants that we have lined up some more webinars, uh, which is going to happen very soon. So please follow us in LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram for more such a wonderful session and information about the wonderful session. Thank you once again, Professor Daveti, and thank you all. Have a nice day. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the invitation. I look forward to more engagement, perhaps, in the future. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Bye. Bye. Bye.